Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my blessed beloveds out there. You are watching Living and Thriving with Rusty, and I am Rusty. I am also feverish, and my knee is killing me. So we're in kind of a different position. Um, so it's a little bit more casual than usual. You might see little dog ears. Um, they are snuggled up against me, as always. I, I think that they, uh, I think, I don't know. I, I think they would actually probably evaporate or something if they weren't connected to me on some level. <laughs> um, today is beautiful out. We are absolutely in like the best weather. The doors are open. It's nice. It's sunny. Um, there's a cool breeze coming in. I feel very fortunate to live on the Gulf. Um, I feel very fortunate to live near water. I don't know if I could ever not live near water. Um, so it's kind of exciting. Uh, I released a new book. My alarm's going up. I released a new book. Uh, and that's Pepper and the White One's Bella. And I hope that uh, you guys can go to my website and download it. It's kind of exciting. It's uh, in honor of everything that I'm doing to help you take your big dream and make them, uh, turn them into like these chewable bite-sized goals that everybody can um, reach. You know, I think dreaming is awesome. And I think that having goals are wonderful and the bigger, the better. But I also think that we overwhelm ourselves and we don't allow ourselves to turn the little tiny pieces that are easily uh, solved and fixed and done. Um, we don't give ourselves enough credit that way. So definitely, you know, look into what your dreams are. Go to your own university. I taught a mastermind last month in regards to taking those dreams and, and breaking them down into bite-sized morsels. And then go to my website and download the book. It's a workbook so that you can work through that process. Jaffe, are you out there? I am. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm living the dream. I live on the Gulf side of Florida right now, and um, I'm not feeling well today. So I'm a little low energy. This is not my normal way of being, but it's a beautiful breeze. Like the ocean breeze is coming in and the sun is up and I live in Jurassic Park. So there's, you know, a ton of life action going on. Oh, where, where do you live? Florida. Oh, Florida, Florida. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's always exciting. There's always an adventure. Like the other day I, I backed out of my parking space and there was a big, huge king turtle under my car. I'm going, how did you even fit under there? Wow. <laughs> we, we get really excited in Virginia when we see like small, tiny turtles. Like, oh, look, there's a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just drove through Virginia. Virginia was um, a very strange state to me because it's quasi Southern and it doesn't, I couldn't find a hotel with, that allowed dogs. My tire blew on the highway and it's like 830 at night and we're in the middle of a pandemic. This is literally last week, mm -hmm. last, last Friday, Saturday. Wow. And um, all the hotels were like, oh, it's a $200 pet fee per pet. I'm like, how much is the room? $65. <laughs> okay, don't accept was, it, was that Southern Virginia or is that Northern Virginia? <laughs> it was um, Dumfries, Dumfries. Dumfries okay. Eh, it's, I guess it's kind of like borderline Northern Virginia, but it's kind of like headed towards the, the South. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. it's so bizarre. Down here, you bring your dog into the grocery store. Like, it's just the way it is. You don't leave your dog in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. Laughing. Yeah. North, was Northern Virginia is more, you know, athletic and diverse and a much more open-minded. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. I was very, I was actually taken aback, especially during a pandemic. Like it was already really eerily quiet. I felt like I was on the set for the walking dead. Um, and then there was just nothing like it was just, bizarre. yeah. How are you holding up? Because I love Virginia. I travel, I travel up and down all the time, four or five times a year, and I take different routes. Um, and uh, 95, this is the second time I've taken 95, and both times I've blown a tire. So that's yeah. a lesson. 
huh. ever again. Uh, I just think it's a it's so used of a highway. Um, oh, right, right. But how are you holding up? Because it seemed like people were doing fine. It was just quiet. Um, I mean, considering everything I do, uh, the, I mean, I, I keep hearing people like, ah, oh, there's not much to do. We're really bored. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> do you want to help me? <laughs> cause right. I am, <laughs> uh, cause I do cybersecurity for a living. Um, but then I also have a lot of the wellness, uh, sides going on with my wellness business and both sides have just been like like skyrocketing <laughs> so that's interesting we are, we're we're yeah. from a different mister i was into cybersecurity and hospital like rfid units for alzheimer's patients and stuff for years and i've been working out of the house for like 20 years and so for me it's really funny because i'm really busy between doing the show and my marketing stuff and writing I just, it's crazy. And I don't know how people are bored right now. Like I've got so much. To yeah. Do. Yeah. So I'm actually recruiting, um, people like my cousins, like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm can well, he, he got, um, he, it was kind of in between jobs and no one was really hiring right now. So he's kind of like, yeah, you know, I spent like two hours going to the gym and then it's getting really bored and boring. I'm like, Hey, Hey, do you want to help me with, um, you know, media marketing and kind of learn this and maybe this could be your passion. <laughs> um, be careful so. when you knock on doors, man. Be careful when you say something like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I could totally use some help right now. So my husband's the same way he does insurance and he's, um, he's kind of doing the same thing. Like, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym. Let me back like in the afternoon. I'm like, must be nice. <laughs> like, do you want to help me with my online course program? You know, maybe you can kind of figure things out for me because I don't have the time to figure everything out. And I want to stick with my genius zones and not really worry about all this other stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to figure out WordPress. Like I, I just published a, a little workbook going on the premise of um, building your levels of success. And um, my dog, sorry. <laughs> We had a dog named Snoopy that looked exactly like uh, the one behind you, the white and black. White. And this is my old girl. She, this is Bella. She's um, she's eight years old. But she yeah, ours, ours is uh, 10. Um, he actually just uh, passed on this year a few months ago. Uh, but yeah, he was he was a great dog. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like these two, I think they think I'm a kangaroo or something because they just have to be in the me at all times and they have like anxiety if they're not it cracks me up bella when she was little and we would take the drive up and down the eastern seaboard she would sit behind me as i was driving like a scarf <laughs> bizarre bizarre dog but anyway so let's get back to you you um have a great wellness package and practice why what what encourages you it gets you excited in the morning to get up and and feel that this is of a benefit, not just to yourself, but to everybody else. Yeah, it, it, it started about three and a half years ago when my, my last uh, baby was born, my third, um, and my OB had, uh, it was a different OB than my first two, um, which both were C-sections, but the, for the last one, I had a different OB that um, I, I honestly think now looking back at it, she was probably overwhelmed and stressed and burnt out herself. So probably not in the right frame of mind, probably shouldn't have done any more um, major surgeries that day. But, you know, <laughs> um, she ended up botching my entire C-section. Um, I actually couldn't walk for about a year. I was given six weeks to live um, because no one could figure out what was going on. Um, she ended up going missing in action. We actually couldn't find her for four or five months. Um, and then when we finally found her, I thought I would get some good answers as to what the heck happened here. There must be a really good reason, right? And nope, wasn't any any reason at all. She kind of forgot. She didn't really even remember doing the C-section. Apparently, um, e either way, it, it was a, it was actually a blessing in disguise for me because um, that was kind of the moment where I decided. Um, I completely changed my mind mindset. I said, there has to be another way. This is not how I'm going to go down, <laughs> especially with three children and a newborn baby. Thankfully, the baby, you know, she, the baby was, was, was fine, um, which, which was, you know, a blessing in itself. 
Um, and I thought, okay, there has to be another way. Let me, I just have to find it. Um, so I did. So I found a whole lot of um, natural modalities out there, natural healing. Um, you know, I, I do believe now that when you look, the ans- when you seek something, the answers will come to you. Um, so I learned a lot, uh, uh, energy healing, Reiki, uh, Chinese traditional medicine, um, Ayurveda, homeopathy, just a whole lot of Bowen therapy, a whole lot of things. Um, and I did, I was able to, even within the six weeks I was given where the surgeons literally laughed at me. They're like, yeah, okay, you know, good luck with that, but we'll see you in six weeks for the surgery. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just fix the surgery date and then let me just see what happens. And yeah, lo and behold, within that six weeks, I had a 25 centimeter hernia because she forgot to patch up all the layers of my abdominal muscles. Um, And it went down to five centimeters. All my organs were just like out of place because who knows what she did in there. Everything kind of went back into the right places. Um, so I didn't fix everything because there was a whole lot of other other things that she did, but at least I fixed the the part that was um, life threatening um, uh, within the six weeks. Uh, so that kind of was my sign that okay, I'm headed in the right direction. I just have a little bit. I, I have more to go, but at least I know that's the direction I need to head in. Um, What's amazing about that is there's a lot but break it down a little bit. I too, when I had my only child, um, I got very, very sick and I had 72 hours to live and there was all kinds of complications and it's just stupid, stupid stuff. Um, wow. Stupid preventable stuff, you know? And what I found is that our healthcare has become so for profit that doctors literally have a 15 minute window to see each and every person. And if they don't, they get reprimanded by the profit center of the healthcare system. And that's really quite frightening because here they are dispelling thousands and thousands of years of historically proven remedies that you and I both, you know, embrace, love and cherish and, you know, live, um, and yet they can't even handle the basics of the responsibility for the patient because the profit center it's like a lorax almost it's just it's so frightening well what's interesting is um i got a ct scan done um right at the four or five month mark when no one could figure out what's going on so like i need some sort of you know test (laughs) you know do a ct scan or something so my primary doctor actually had to order that, Um, not the OB, uh, since we couldn't find her. (laughs) So, um, and then after the six, uh, within the six weeks, uh, when I started feeling a little bit better, I I couldn't tell, is this a placebo effect? Is it just my mindset saying I feel better? Or, you know, uh, can I actually prove it? So I got another CT scan done, which actually showed, um, yep, it went from 25 to five, all the organs are back in the right places. Um, and then I try to go back to the surgeon and try to tell them like, oh, see, you know, um, I was able to heal myself. They canceled my appointment. They're like, don't ever come back. (laughs) We don't want any, I'm like, don't you want to know how I healed myself? They're like, no, just let us know when you're ready for the surgery. Like what, what surgery? Like I'm not getting another, why would I get a surgery when I was able to heal myself like 99%, at least for these two parts, um, within six weeks. You know, and you couldn't even guarantee this result. Um, they actually said you probably need like multiple surgeries because I had double hernias. I had an incision that was like 15 inches apart. I, my abdominal muscles were split. So I hope she's uh, not practicing anymore. Like I, I genuinely hope that she's not. <laughs> I'm sitting you know, here. That's the. I, that's that's really the. I, I think the shameful part in all of this, in my opinion, is just because since I was able to heal my, it it took me a good two and a half years. So six weeks was just kind of like the life threatening part, which I was able to heal, but in order to get back to a functional state again, um, and really do what everything I've been doing before this, it took me a good two and a half years. Um, And within that time period, we consulted with legal and, and lawyers. And what they said was like, well, first of all, did anyone die? I'm like, um, well, no, (laughs) I mean, as of now, no, like, okay, well, and then you seem to be okay. I'm like, well, yeah, because I, I found all these modalities that, have, that are really helping me out. Like, okay, 
well, you don't have much of a case then. Um, you know, if you had just gotten the multiple surgeries and shown that they didn't really work, then you would have more of a case. Um, and the most we can do even after that point is to just get, you know, some money back. Um, but that's about it. Because for her to lose her license, basically something really drastic has to happen multiple times. So you would have to prove that she's done this for other people and something drastic happened. And only then you even have a chance of, of, of winning that kind of case. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let the universe take care of that. <laughs> you know, the karma is there for a reason. <laughs> And I will, you know, I'm not, I'm just not going to worry myself and I'm just going to worry about my own health. And, and, um, so once during that two and a half years, um, I, I, once I was able to kind of get to a functional state, I'm like, you know, I have to like tell other people about this, <laughs> you know, there's so many women out there, uh, especially after childbirth, um, and, you know, they're going through all of these unnecessary procedures, um, over being over prescribed medications from doctors. Um, and so I started learning all of these modalities, um, and started, you know, my own practice to kind of help others. Well, and it's, it's so tough, especially when you have a, when you freshly have a child, you already have the hormones, you already have the fear because it, I, I don't, I've never met a mother who is not honest enough to say you would rather have carry them inside you than let them be out here in the world. It gets so much safer on the inside. And you have all those emotions that you go through um, being a, a mom, whether it's one or 20, you know, there's still that process, but then to be so yeah. darn sick and in pain and, you know, how was that transitioning period to try to juggle and balance those aspects of your life? Because it's hard. I mean, I went through it with one. I couldn't imagine with three. Yeah. I mean, it was you know, when it, looking back at it, uh, I was definitely, I definitely had PTSD and, um, and post-traumatic, uh, um, uh, depression as well, just because I was trying to be the, you know, super mom, um, for all three of my kids. And really I could only be there for the baby. And I actually couldn't physically carry the baby, um, unless I was sitting down. So somebody literally, I literally, I felt like I was kind of like 90 years old. I'm like, okay, can someone please give me the baby now? Because I have to nurse her. Okay, I'm done. Can someone please take the baby now? <laughs> um, and and then forget about my other, my older two, because they probably didn't even see me. Um, or cause, and I, I realized like how important my core was. Like every single movement would would hurt. Um, even if I just like moved my head, I'm like. I'm just moving my head. Like, why is my core, why does my stomach hurt? Because it's all like your whole body is just tied to your core. So when your core is just like, you know, just, you know, uh, not even functional, then every single movement um, would just be excruciating pain. And it's really hard because my husband was trying to help, um, you know, uh, with the skills and tools that he had, uh, mostly trying to help with my older two, but he really didn't, couldn't understand why I was in so much pain. Um, because for four, four or five months, neither of us really knew because we only got the CT scan uh, the fourth month. Um, and then I was still trying to work. I, I thought like, hey, if I try to like work uh, whenever I can, um, maybe it'll take my mind off things. Uh, but of course my work uh, team, they were supportive as well, but they're like, oh, so what's going on? Like, you know, last time you were back in like eight weeks and I'm like, I don't really know what's going on. All I know is I'm excruciating pain. And like, well, why don't you just um, get the surgery? I'm like, because I just, I just, um, something is telling me not to get the surgery because when I'm already so weak and dysfunctional and then the doctors have really, no, none of the surgeons, and we went to four or five different surgeons, none of them could really tell us like, oh, this is what's going on. Here's how we're going to fix it. And here's the outcome. They were just like, yeah, your CT, I mean, this is really, there's a lot of complications here. We don't really know what's happening. So we're just going to like go in and try to figure it out. And if, uh, if we can't figure it out, we'll, we'll come back out. Like, that doesn't sound very, um, you know, but, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I, don't, I, I think I'll just take my own chances. So it was a lot, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, and just dealing with myself, my, all the chaos within myself, but also 
trying to justify it to my family and friends. I'm like, well, just get the surgery, Jody. Just, just, you know, just do that. I'm like, I, I know. Like, I think I, I'm just going to take this in my own hands. And, and they're like, you have six weeks to live. Like, you should just do what the doctor says. I'm like, well, I, I, I don't know. I just don't believe. Uh, you know, a doctor is the one that caused this. <laughs> <laughs> so what makes me have any trust in that system anymore when the, you know, literally went to five different surgeons and they can't figure it out. Um, so I, I think I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to try it. Um, but what was great is I think when I, when I actually proved to everyone, not just the doctors, but even to myself, like within that six weeks and the CT scans were just, you know, it doesn't lie. Um, and I think it kind of opened doors to others like, oh, so what is it that you did? What, what's this energy healing stuff? Um, can you tell us more about that? Uh, so now that I have my own practice, it's like there's no debating that, hey, we've literally seen, you know, they've literally seen me go through it. Um, so now this is kind of motivation for them when they see others going through it. They're like, hey, you should talk to Jyoti. You know, she's she kind of got through all of this by herself. Um, so, you know, there is another way, but you got to set that intention. Are you able to actually teach in the hospitals? I know some hospitals are actually looking into the possibility of having Reiki classes, especially for cancer patients, um, meditation classes, that kind of alternative, which you and I both know it's not alternative, but that's what they call it, yeah. medicine. Um, are you able to do that now, which is really cool? I would love to branch out into more hospitals. I do work for the um, National Institutes of Health right now. So um, I'm bringing in like the, uh, I started a health and wellness program there for uh, um, the, the whole IT um, Institute, but I'm also um, making it available for like nurses um, to, so that they get an idea of, I, I, what I did was I, I offered a free 20 minute um, energy healing session for anyone that was um, interested. Um, and that really started opening up people's awareness into, into it. Um, and I said, hey, if you wanna learn more, you know, um, I can do a, a longer session. Um, or you know, I, I also do Reiki classes. Um, so I said, if you're interested in learning it yourself, you know, come, come to a class. So you know, I'm starting you know, where I work, but I would, be, I would love to kind of branch out and, and do it at more hospitals for for clinicians and for nurses. Yeah, I think I think that there's a really nice balance between um, current conventional medicine and traditional medicine that you and I love and embrace. Um, and I think a lot of our dis-ease has to do with our mental ability to process and heal ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. I am a huge believer as you know, but how do you articulate that to somebody who's just so conventionally driven? I mean, that's the part and, or hurdle that I think a lot of us go through, um, even as patients, you know, when I, when I go, I actually interview doctors before I accept them as a doctor and, and they find it funny, but it's like, well, if you're gonna just give me pills all the time, we're not, we're not working. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, right. that's not the way I am. Um, so how do you recommend people have those conversations with their general practitioner? You have to advocate for yourself. Um, but it, just in my whole journey, it's, you have to believe in it yourself too. Cause it's hard to advocate for something that you're kind of like, eh, I don't know, like maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not going to Like I just kind of, I set my intention. Like it's gonna work. <laughs> like I am gonna find another way. Uh, I so I actually end up teaching a lot of doctors um, myself. So I, I I met this wonderful functional chiropractor who who was a big part of my healing journey. Um, but I and we had a great relationship, and sometimes I actually had to teach him. So he used this method called the cold laser technique. Um, non-painful, um, non-invasive, and so really, because I had a whole lot of scar tissue build up like all across my incisional area. Um, so he was using the cold laser to go along. One day, I got this huge, tremendous like TMJ pain, like this nerve pain, because the baby it, who would sleep next to me had really strong feet, but she still does, and she was kicking me in the middle of the night without me realizing. And um, he's like, "Oh yeah, you need to." Um, 
go to a dentist and get a shot in your TMJ nerve. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm like, no, well, that, that's the only way. Like, that's, that's, the, that's, num- that's the fastest way to, to heal the TMJ nerve issue because it's kind of a common issue. I'm like, well, that's nice, but, you know, um, why don't you just do the, the, the laser thing that you do because um, it's going to work. Just, just do it. Um, he's like, uh, I don't think, I've never used a laser for this. I don't think it's going to work. Like, it's going to work. It, it'll work. Just, just do it. And he did. And within like five minutes, it was like 80% better. So it's almost like he didn't even realize that. Uh, so now that's what he promotes. Like, oh, you know, this laser actually works with TMJ pain. Um, and we always joke around like, wow, like I actually learned so much from the patient. <laughs> and it kind of put him in a state of just be more humble. So sometimes I think we just have to advocate for ourselves, but you have to set that intention for yourself. Like, no, there, it, something doesn't feel right listening to your intuition. And you know what? I just want to try this. Like, just let me try. And if you have a good doctor, um, I, I found that functional doctors are a little bit more open-minded when it, when it comes to uh, looking at yourself from a holistic point of view, not just a point and shoot type of technology. <laughs> Um, or, but I actually converted completely to homeopathic, um, care. So I haven't seen a single Western medical doctor in three, three and a half years now. Um, and the, the beauty of the homeopathic care is once you start going that route, um, and you kind of get yourself, uh, you kind of start releasing all the toxins and you get to that base state, um, you're, you're pretty much good. Like you, you've already built up your immunity. You've gotten rid of like all the bad toxins that you've been kind of putting into your system. Um, and then once you're at that state, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're, you're pretty good. So anytime you hear about all these viruses and, uh, and you see everybody else getting sick, um, you're kind of sailing along and you might get sick for like a couple hours or like a day, uh, but nothing like everybody else or, you, or nothing may happen to you. Um, so we changed a lot of different things in their whole lifestyle. We started using all natural products. Um, so I don't use anything with chemicals anymore, including like beauty products, even feminine care, it's all natural. Um, and the environment, like if you start using all those Lysol sprays, we got rid of all of that. We use only like plant derived um, cleaning supplies. I honestly, I'm honestly a huge believer that the reason why lung cancer has gotten to be so um, potent, to put it as nicely as possible, is because of those aerosol sprays. I honestly believe yeah. that putting all that crap in the air. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's very true. Um, yeah, and we I learned feng shui as well, so I kind of changed, I started changing different things in our house and brought in a lot of plants. We did have plants already, but there's very strategic um, plants that, that could actually take in all the toxins um, and strategic placements of those plants. So I think, you know, just looking at everything from a mind, body, energy perspective and, and looking at the unknown factors, um, all of these energetic factors that you didn't even know affected you, um, it really makes a, a huge, and you can feel it in, 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 in your home too. Like I did all of this feng shui clearing and um, strategic placements of things and my family thought I was crazy. But then within a week, <laughs> they're like, oh, okay, there's one more thing that she learned. <laughs> what is she, what's going to happen now? Um, but after a week, like you, you notice that the arguments like um, reduced, you notice just like a, there's a just sense of freshness in the air. Um, and then it also gave me the perspective of uh, um, identifying when something was off balance. Um, you know, so, so, so whenever I felt like, hmm, like there seems to be kind of like this, this pressure in the air, like this heaviness, um, that must mean like something is off balance. Um, and just gave me that awareness. Whereas before you would probably just go days and days and maybe even weeks and just go like, oh, it must be like a bad time right now. Maybe it's a bad phase. But now it's kind of like you're able to catch it. You're like, hmm, something is off. So either the energy's off or, um, you know, uh, some, something is off and you're able to kind of clear it um, and, and recharge yourself or recharge the, the, um, the energy of the, of the home. I think it's really, I think it's really um, interesting that you have developed this practice after such a traumatic experience. And I, 
I'm curious, did your husband go, okay, she's a little, <laughs> or was he like, all right, honey, let's do this. I'm fully supporting you. Or was he just kind of one foot in, one foot out? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I, I think he just, you know, he wanted me to get better. Um, and I think there was just so much unknown chaos um, right in the beginning itself. Uh, so everyone thought I was crazy. Like, you know, just do what the surgeons say, Jody. Like, you have six weeks. It's like, it's, you know, it's like as if you have cancer, someone's telling you you have six weeks. You're kind of like, yeah, that's nice, but I'm just going to do what I want. I'm like, hey, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to live the six weeks the way I want to live it. <laughs> you know, and I definitely feel like I'm not just going to put my, my whole body under another surgeon's knife. Who knows what that surgeon's going to do? This was supposed to be like a normal C-section, you know, um, I, this is my third. So I thought I had it all figured out. So if this turned out like this, who knows what this other surgery is going to be when they don't even know what they're doing. Like, they're like, oh, we're just going to go in, play around and come back out. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not like a playground. <laughs> um, so, so they didn't say play around, but they're like, oh, we'll just go in and look around and see if we can figure something out. We'll come back out. It's that, like, it's yeah. that uncertainty that they give you. I'm, I'm getting ready to have my knee done. And my first surgery was on my ankle. I broke it in five places during the soccer tournament. Oh. And the doctor, like your doctor, decided to go in, not do what they were supposed to do, and then disappear across the country oh. and change the name. And so I ended up having to have a second surgery with a new doctor, which was scary because I'm like, do I want to walk? Do I trust this person? Because that's the reality of, of this. And, um, but because of the first surgery not happening mm -hmm. and the second surgery, it screwed up my knee. So now I'm, I'm getting ready to go and to have that done. And it's, I think self-advocacy is huge. And if you don't speak up, then you end up in situations that um, cause more damage than not. So I'm huge about advocating. And I'm also huge about if I don't feel comfortable with the doctor, I'm out, I'm gone. I just, you know, there's, you have an internal system that allows you the privilege to know whether or not you're in a good space. Yeah. And I think that's where all that healing work comes from. Um, and I think that's where having vibrations, I'm very big on vibrations and grounding um, because we are, we're nothing but a huge vibrational channel. And if their vibrations off, it's not going to mesh with yours at all. And you don't want to be under, you know? <laughs> right. Right. And sometimes like you, you know, maybe you do need the surgery, like let's say for you, um, but you could still get the, um, the energy healing or whatever uh, other techniques to compliment, um, you know, maybe you get it ahead of time. So it kind of prepares you for the surgery better. So um, you're more receptive um, and maybe even have someone sending you um, the energy healing during the surgery so that it, it you know, um, so everything goes well and then you can get the energy healing afterwards. So, so it's, it's not that it's like one or the other. Sometimes, yeah, you know, every, every, I think care system has its place. Like if it's a, if you're in an accident, it's a life or that situation. Yeah, I probably won't take the homeopathy route at that moment. <laughs> like go to the hospital, do what you need to do. But then um, afterwards, you know, most definitely all of those natural healing modalities can definitely speed up the process of recovery. Because um, I tell you, I had foot surgery uh, as well in 2009 uh, when I dislocated a bone in my foot. Um, uh, and actually, this, that was the second time I did it. The first time I did it, it took me a year, um, and I didn't know people were doing energy healing at that time because they called it something different. Um, but they literally moved my bone back into place. Um, and they called it like, you know, uh, advanced physical therapy. Um, and it was just one person in this uh, physical therapy, and no one really knew what she did. <laughs> but they only referred people to her when the normal physical therapy route didn't work. So that, that was me. And they're like, yeah, what, you know what? Why don't we go, why don't you go see this person? And she does this um, APT stuff. And it was, it was really interesting. And like, she would just press on different parts of the body and I could feel like things moving and, I, and literally like my bone back and moved back into place. 
Um, so I didn't even know I was, I was already getting this energy healing like way, like, you know, 15 years ago. But the second time it happened, um, I was like, okay, you know, how many times is this going to keep happening? So I did go through the surgery where they inserted a metal piece um, where the bone was. And that was supposed to fix everything. It wasn't supposed to have any other issues, but my body kept rejecting the metal piece. So it's a foreign object. So again, for another year, like I still had a pain. I could feel the metal piece in my body. It was literally, I could literally feel it trying to, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't fit in here. Like I don't belong here. And my body's like, what is this like metal thing? Um, and again, I had another energy healing type of person telling me like, hey, you know, that you're basically your body's trying to reject the metal piece. That's why, that's why it still hurts. So let us do some, you know, APT on it. And they really got my body to kind of uh, adjust to it. And then it was fine. I so, love, I love yeah. the fact that we're, we're coming to a place where we're no longer burnt at the stake for being able to heal people and heal ourselves and have these conversations. Um, we are running out of time, but I do want everybody to be able to reach out to you if they have more questions and they want to learn more about your story. Sure. Where do we find out? Find you. Um, sure. Uh, you can go to jothidugard.com, uh, www.jothidugar.com, or you can shoot me an email, um, again, jothidugar at gmail.com. And where does Jothi come from? That's a unique name. Uh, it's uh, originally from India. Okay, very cool. And what side of India is your family from? Um, they're from, uh, from the south, from Bangalore, Chennai regions. I, I was born there and I came here when I was one. So very cool. mostly very cool. Americanized, but, uh, but I still go back every now and then. <laughs> that's one that's on my bucket list. I love the colors and the smells and the traditions. And every time I can find an authentic, not Americanized Indian restaurant, I live there because the, the food and the personality and the culture is just so beautiful to me. Yeah, yeah. If you're ever in Northern Virginia again, there's a there's a lot of really good uh, Indian restaurants here, in Virginia and DC area. All right, Jyoti, I am so grateful that you survived your story and you were able to thrive through it and become a helper to other people because I think that's really what we're supposed to be here for. And instead of turning it into a tragedy, you made it into a miracle. And now your children are going to be pretty awesome too because they watched their mom go through this and you know it'll be interesting to see what they grow up to be yep yep i'm uh, i'm doing some reiki classes for kids as well so they're they're all going to be part of this <laughs> absolutely Thank you. so do you have a couple of tips or tricks that you would recommend for people who are living during covid19 and civil unrest and all of these other kinds of fear-based stuff um yeah, I mean, just just kind of understanding the fact that fear is actually uh, reducing your ability to respond um, and actually lowering your immunity as well. So just having that fear and worry all the time, you're not really helping yourself or others, and it's actually reducing your ability to respond to any any type of virus, even even a small cold. Um, so I do teach, uh, easy mind, body, energy techniques. You can do anywhere, anytime with your kids, with your families, even at the workplace setting. Um, so if you reach out to me, I'm happy to, to, uh, send you some, some free videos or training videos on, on that because it's what you do most that counts. So going to the gym one hour a day and spending 23 hours, uh, you know, sitting in one place or worrying or being stressed is not going to be as beneficial as just kind of spending five minutes every hour doing some sort of um, effective uh, techniques that really rejuvenate your mind, body, energy is really what's gonna, what's gonna help in this. You're a beautiful soul. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. You too. You're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty and I'm Rusty and I'm a little under the weather. But with Jyoti and her experience, I'm inspired to go and look and see what I can do to make my day a little bit smoother since I have five interviews in a row. And that's actually pretty exhausting. Um, it takes a lot of work to make these shows happen. And I could not be more grateful. Tonight, we're going to be in New Zealand. Tomorrow, we're going to be in Australia. We're going to be in Thailand in a couple of days. So I get to travel talking to amazing people from all over the world 
in regards to living and thriving and, and how they do it. It's really actually exciting though. I seem low energy and I apologize for that. Don't forget to go to my website and check out my new workbook to help you recreate the better version of you and to fulfill your dreams. Go and see Jaffe's um, website and get some tips and tricks on how to work on your core. And that's not just your belly area, but that's also your spiritual area and your mind area. Those are all parts of your core. And as I always say, you are a beautiful flawed bag of water surfing on a big gigantic rock into infinity without a steering wheel. So meaning, let it go, relax, go and check her out. She's got some neat stuff on her website. Know that you're loved, know that you're beautiful and take care of yourself, be kind to yourself. This is a great time to take an extra bubble bath, to write a poem, to learn haiku, to blare music at the top of your speaker's capacity and just jam, jamming's awesome, I love music. Um, to take an extra nap, to take care of yourself. That's really what this time is affording us is more self-care. So until next time.